started. Welcome to the first of this series of uh, webinars to help you prepare for the student cluster competition for SC20. So our title today is the SC20 student cluster competition and how to join it. A little bit of housekeeping to begin with. We'll have a Q&A session at the end. You should be able to see uh, a bar at the top of the slides that says ask a question at slides blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll paste that link into the chat to make it easy to just click on. Um, yeah, so as we go along, if you have questions, please ask them there and we'll do a, a fairly open Q&A session at the end. Uh, we're recording this session. So the recording will be posted, uh, actually not on the webinars page, but on a uh, YouTube channel. We'll have a, a link to it from the webinars page. Um, the slides, in fact, are already available uh, from the webinars page, and you should have received an email from Eventbrite when you um, uh, registered or, or last night or this morning uh, with the details of where the slides are if you want to follow along. And presumably, since uh, everybody's already in the room, you've already discovered the Zoom password. Okay, so the SC20 student cluster competition, what is it? The SC here is short for supercomputing and SC is the International Conference for High Performance Computing, Networking, Storage and Analysis. You can see that over time the, uh, the name has drifted a little from just supercomputing to a much broader spectrum of uh, scientific computing and engineering. Uh, it's held between uh, in November this year, it's November 15 to 20 at the Georgia World Congress Center in Atlanta, Georgia. And we have a Twitter hashtag, this is for the entire conference, which is more than HPC. All right, so what is a student cluster competition? Taking a slight step back, HPC, it turns out, is one of the best tools out there for science and engineering. Um, there's been over the last few years, a few reports looking at return on investment for different um, uh, technologies for uh, doing science and engineering, and in particular for supercomputing. And it's consistently been found that HPC has something like a, a 500 to one return on investment. So it's a, a really powerful tool for doing science and engineering in, a, in the modern world. And the student cluster competition aims to foster skill development and also social connections to help bring new people into HPC field. So, okay, so that was nice, but it didn't really answer the question, did it? What actually is a student cluster competition? So the cluster competition is a 48 hour non-stop contest to build and run a supercomputer, a small supercomputer, but a supercomputer. The way it, uh, happens is we have teams of six undergraduate students in a team. There's a few little markers down there. We'll talk about them soon. And in the lead up and during the conference, you'll design and build a high, uh, high performance computing cluster. You'll measure it. You'll uh, tweak its performance. You'll run real science workloads on your cluster and uh, also on some cloud resources. You'll have to deal with this, uh, recovery from a disaster scenario and uh, present your results in the form of uh, reports and talks and posters. And all of this happens within a power budget. So uh, undergraduate students, you do need to be, um, yeah, not have your uh, degree yet, but be enrolled in an ed educational institution at the beginning of the competition. Also, I think this is new this year, uh, team members do have to be 18 years or older at the beginning of the competition. Okay, so what happens? It uh, begins before the actual conference and in the lead up to supercomputing, uh, there'll be a lot of preparation. So teams will form partnerships with their institutions and with vendors. You'll design a cluster and using some sort of uh, practice hardware, either your, uh, your cluster or something that your institution can provide, you'll practice building and running the applications which have already been published and we'll talk about briefly. We'll have in the lead up a series of these webinars uh, with various tips and tricks to help you prepare. 
you'll need to uh, deal with the logistics of getting to the competition. Um, so just a, a few notes about that. The competition provides the conference registration and the accommodation for six team members plus one advisor. So if your team is uh, accepted into the competition, then those costs are covered. However, there are more costs that will need to be covered, which we encourage your institution and vendor uh, partners to help with. And we'll uh, go a little bit more into some of the things that it's worth uh, being aware of shortly. Also, before the actual event starts, you'll want to have uh, done a, a first cut build out of your cluster, make sure it's installed, make sure you can run things on it, uh, and some preparation will work. We'll have a, a poster session, so you'll need to have your posters ready before the event starts. And you can also make a start on the reports before you arrive, and that's kind of a good tip. Then, when we arrive at the SC conference, and we'll have a, a dedicated webinar about what happens at the conference because you know it's a it's quite an involved thing and it's uh, it's helpful to have a heads up so we'll do that closer to the date the actual conference runs from sunday through friday the cluster competition runs from monday through wednesday with some events on thursday but teams will start arriving on Friday afternoon, evening, and Saturday morning. And we'll start out with safety briefing and other essential information on Saturday. After that, from Saturday uh, sometime in the afternoon or evening, you'll have access through to basically first thing Monday morning to unpack and build out your cluster, test it, make sure it's all working. Uh, that'll be interspersed by a few social events along the way. Then on Monday morning, the benchmarking begins. And at this point, up until this point, your advisor and yeah, other people potentially, um, limited amount of other people, uh, can help you with things. Once the benchmarking begins, the team is on their own. No more help from advisors. So Monday will be spent doing benchmarking. So you'll run some benchmarking codes. Uh, during that time, you can modify your configuration until you found what works best and you'll submit your benchmarking results and that locks in your configuration for the rest of the competition. Then Monday evening, the benchmarking time ends. You need to have all your results in. Um, we'll take the various results to be able to score them and the scores will be announced later on in the competition. And then Monday evening, we have the competition kickoff. And at that point, uh, for instance, the mystery app, which you'll learn about in a moment, will be announced. Still from this point, uh, no more advisor help. This is the teams working. And after the competition kickoff, you'll have 48 hours where it's always open. You can always be there. So you can, you can go all through the night if you like. Uh, yeah, we, we would like you to have uh, yeah, some awareness of safety and not stay up too late or too long. But yeah, for 48 hours, it's go, go, go. During that time, you'll be running applications, writing reports, there'll be daily stand-ups. Uh, we'll have sessions where uh, you can stop and present your posters. We'll have lightning talks. Somewhere, there'll be at least one disaster recovery incident that you'll need to deal with in the form of a power outage. So this is, uh, this is actually based on a real event. In the very first SC student cluster competition, there really was a power outage and the teams had to deal with it. And you know, it's something that a real HPC center has to have the ability to deal with as well. So we've included it uh, since then as a regular part of the event. Uh, during the 48 hours, you'll have interviews with application judges to uh, which will you know, we'll go towards the uh, scoring of the different uh, applications. And there'll be a few cluster events in there. Uh, for instance, one fairly exciting event that happens during every SC conference is the next top 500 list is unveiled. Uh, and this is where the fastest computers in the world are measured and announced. This is kind of the Academy Awards for HPC centers. So that's a pretty intense time. And then 
on Wednesday, late in the afternoon, the 48 hours will come to an end. And it's kind of like the end of exams, pens down. Once it's at the end, no more uh, submitting results. So you need to make sure your results are in before the event ends. But it's done. So Wednesday nights are yeah, typically a, a bit of a party night. Then uh, a party night for the competitors. The uh, committee will be very busy uh, judging and scoring all the, all the results that, get, that came in. Then on Thursday, we have kind of the wrap up. So we'll announce the scores, there'll be awards, uh, we'll have wrap up meetings, and there'll be time then for you to do the cluster teardown. So you'll need to uh, unbuild your clusters, pack them back up into their boxes and get them ready to be shipped back out. So that's a pretty intense week. Uh, so the next question then is, is what's it like? And we have uh, a few people here. Um, I had a chat at the end of last week with some people from uh, the GeekPy HPC team from Shanghai Tech University and the Wolfpack HPC team from North Carolina State University from last year's competition uh, to tell us a little bit about what their experiences and memories. We also have online, I think a couple of people from the, uh, uh, Racklet team from ETH Zurich, and we'll speak with them live uh, shortly after this video. So, in testing this works, let's see if the video audio works. If you don't hear audio from the video, uh, please raise, raise a hand and we'll uh, see if we can solve that. I'm here on Zoom with some representatives from the Shanghai Tech team from the SC 2019 student cluster competition. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Dr. Shu Ying. I'm from the Shanghai Tech University. I'm, I'm the uh, assi assistant professor here and uh, I'm serving as the uh, coach for this uh, Shanghai Tech uh, HPC team we call the GeekPi HPC. Hi everyone, my name is Yu Zhuo Jing. Uh, I'm from Shanghai Tech University and in the last year I uh, served as the captain of team uh, GeekPi HPC from Shanghai Tech University in SC19. Uh, my name is Ian Jason and uh, I'm also a team member of the uh, GeekPi HPC and I attended last year's uh, student customer competition as well. What for you was the most memorable moment of the SC19 cluster competition? My most memorable moment was, uh, was at the power cutoff. And uh, in last year there was two power cutoffs and in the first time, in the first time I was morning called by my colleague in the hotel and I rushed uh, into the scene to help uh, restore the, the machine. And the second time I was on the spot. So at that moment, the scene was just a complete uh, silence. Uh, and it's like suddenly, suddenly wearing a noise cancellation headphone. <laughs> and, uh, but what was really uh, important for us was that uh, when we, uh, go back and check the seven hours long application running log. We found it just finished before the shutdown and that was really lucky. It's my first time to attend such a large, me large meeting, a large conference like SC19. So uh, everything seems new to me. And I'm speaking with Dr. Greg Bird, who was the mentor for the North Carolina State team, Wolfpack HPC for SC19. The, the most memorable moment for me was when um, I got a call on the team. This was while before the competition started, so I was still able to help them. And uh, I realized we didn't have the right power cords to connect part of our cluster to the, uh, to the power source. Um, so I was really, I went to, to help them, but really I just helped them brainstorm and the team came up with a solution and we, and we had to order something and, and uh, next day delivery and on the weekend and it came. and. And luckily, we were able to get it all plugged in before the competition started. How much HPC experience did you and your team members have before signing up? Uh, I have participated in uh, ASC uh, preliminary uh, in the in the last year, last year, uh, and 
That's it. I have never been to the scene before. Most of our team members don't have uh, HPC uh, experiences. So the team members, I would say, had basically none. Um, I've been in the area of parallel computing for a long time, and I've been to supercomputing before, uh, but I don't teach it on a regular basis. Um, so it was uh, it was quite new for all of us. Um, and one of the students uh, went to supercomputing 18 as a as a student experience, and she came back saying we need to do this and so she put together a team and and i helped them and and they did most of it themselves the uh, one of our uh colleagues have been on site uh in the hpc contest and uh, uh, uh most uh, the rest of us have learned uh, some system related course like power computing computer architectures and operating systems and we uh, meet each other uh, in these courses. But starting from so basically, basically zero knowledge. So how has being part of the competition impacted what, what you see as your career path from here? I, I got very interested in like uh, computer architecture, uh, architecture. Uh, especially I'm interested in the uh, performance of some program. So yeah, uh, and I'm doing the uh, uh, I'm doing some assistant work for some professor like the computer architecture course, and now I'm helping the professor design some problems related to um, performance programming. Yeah. I ported that application on the GPU, and this experience really helped me a lot uh, for my uh, computer science uh, studies. Yeah, uh, a lot of the the team members came from my programming class, so they you know, we're learning how to code and, and, and how to solve problems with programs, but they hadn't really uh, thought about the large machines. So I, I think it, uh, it opened them to another area that they hadn't been exposed to before. This is really good for the students who are interested in the system, like computer systems or the high performance computings. And finally, what advice would you give to somebody thinking about joining the student cluster competition? Prepare soon, uh, prepare earlier, and uh, don't hesitate and treat this as the like big party instead of just the uh, like a hardcore competition who win, who lose. It seems that the, most of the, my students enjoyed the whole experience. Uh, last year, we uh, rushed to the final hour to submit our work, and uh, the network connections got congested, and our, uh, some of our work did not submit to the uh, the server so we got only a few points don't be intimidated by all the information you have to put together um, and i think you know a, a very key thing to start with is the uh, hardware vendor partnership uh, find somebody that is going to uh, help you and work with you and um, and that will go a long way towards putting together a, a successful competition and come and join the SCC and uh, at here you can build your customized clusters and compete with uh, world-class HPC teams uh, and you can also uh, meet many big names in the HPC fields so it will definitely help you uh, improve your HPC knowledge and uh, help your career paths. So that was some representatives from teams uh, GeekPy HPC and Wolfpack HPC from last year. Uh, we also have with us on the call, here we go, uh, a few members from uh, Team Racklet from ETH Zurich. Uh, I, I spotted uh, Torsten, who is the advisor for that team, and Manuel from that team. You should be able to unmute yourself at this point. Is there somebody else that I missed? Hi, I'm Manuel. Uh, yes, there should be one or two or three other team members around. Uh, one of them is Valeria, Tore, and uh, I think Emir is also around. Okay, here we go. Let 
try. Here we go. The last one didn't work. And I yeah. think si Simon is also from our team. I think he also made it. He's he's Hello. someone. Hello, I'm also on the call. Okay. Uh, so hopefully, oh, sorry, I missed that. I oh, was that was that Valeria. Yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, all of you hopefully are able to unmute now and uh, join the conversation. Uh, if you find that you can't, uh, please raise a hand. So, so yeah, we have um, members from Team Recollect from ETH Zurich with us today, and hopefully at the end they'll be able to uh, maybe answer uh, more questions during the Q and A session. But to begin with, I have the, the same sort of questions as uh, as we uh, spoke with the other two teams about just uh, people jump in as you as you feel uh, ready um, can you tell us first what was your most memorable moment in the SC19 competition Um, my most memorable moment in the SC19 competition was that we found our cluster on a Sunday. I mean, officially, you should already have your cluster ready on a Saturday, but ours was at a different booth. And the whole Saturday, we were basically just hanging around because we couldn't prepare for the competition. And then on Sunday, we found our cluster and we were all really happy and started, started catching up with the other teams. So yeah, that definitely was one moment I will remember. I remember that moment and, and uh, Team Reckless did a, did a fantastic job of uh, rushing their cluster together with a, essentially a 12 or 24 hour um, opposite of a head start. <laughs> <laughs> I think it served kind of as a lesson that these things can happen in the real world. I mean, the whole project is such a huge feat and there are so many different actors involved that uh, you also have to, I mean, these things can happen. So it's good to kind of not, not ex expect that, but manage to deal with it when, when the problem arrives to kind of expect that there might be problems and that's part of the challenge. Logistics and troubleshooting. We also had to think of alternative ways to continue participating in the competition. And we got some offers from the other people participating in the conference. We got some offers from a local supercomputer, super, supercomputing center. I think it was in Boulder. Something like a 40 minute drive from Denver uh, to receive a fairly old cluster, but still be able to participate in the competition. But unfortunately, that wouldn't have been very competitive compared to the hardware that we would normally have. But at the end, it was a happy ending and we found our cluster. I think that was the most memorable experience for our team. Yes, and it was great to see the, um, the help and the collaboration that uh, other teams and centers were, were offering as well. Yeah, for, for me as advisor, it was basically uh, the, the same key experience when I walked in the morning in the, into the uh, hotel's um, breakfast area, talked to my team, and they were like, oh, we don't have a cluster. It's, it's lost. <laughs> so my first moment was like, oh, well, there are like at least eight uh, V100s in there, <laughs> each of them about five times as expensive as my car. So I was like, mm, OK. And then, of course, uh, yeah, the second moment was, oh, doom, how do they actually get to, uh, to compete? So, but it's glad that we all, uh, that, that they actually went through it. So actually, as, as in my role as advisor, I tried to stay away as much as possible to, to let the students uh, guide the effort. And I have to say, this, this team is absolutely amazing. So they're fully self-driven, fully self-organized. So my contribution was really mostly um, signing things. It's great to see um, 
new HPC talent developing this way. Right, let's, let's move on to the next question. How much HPC experience did the various team members have before signing up? I think we can second what the other teams already said, is that none of us had significant HPC experience. Some of us didn't even have much Linux experience, um, but there's a really steep learning curve, which we all went through, and we really, we really got there in the end, but we didn't have any experience beforehand, really. So it's, uh, it's quite a ramp up getting ready for the competition. Uh, and then I guess the, the following question to that is having ramped up all of that experience in a, in a very short amount of time, how has uh, participating in the competition impacted what you see as your career path from here? I think for me, it has uh, shown me the, the potential of HPC, uh, what you can do. Uh, like, uh, it gave everything we learn in lectures a perspective to say. So in lectures, we often hear about concepts and we, we uh, also have, uh, most of us or all of us have, uh, we are all computer science students. So we have attended lectures for parallel programming and other stuff. And we, we learn about these uh, optimization techniques uh, at, and, and all those things. But uh, the competition itself and the, the whole preparation phase, also the time during the preparation, it put all of this into a perspective. So already now, so you, now you really see where, where these algorithms and optimizations and everything you learn, where it comes into play. And I think HPC is, is a great way to, to bring all of this together. In addition with also having like really real world applications directly connected with it. So it's no longer like, an assignment you would get from a lecture, compute something with this algorithm because we just heard about this algorithm. So it's really, you have like a physics simulation and it's, it uh, simulates something from the real world. And on, while doing this, we, we can apply all this computer science knowledge and engineering, we, we learn in lectures about how to make things run fast. So that's really interesting to me. And I think just, yeah, this really made me like, I, I would maybe think I would like to learn more about this stuff and, and focus my career path towards this. Yes, it's, it's great to see that you've been able to uh, uh, attach um, more concreteness to the things that you're learning. So then one final question for all or anyone on the, on the team. What advice would you give to someone thinking about joining the SCC, the, the student cluster competition? What's the, the, the one big tip? So I think, um, yeah. I, know. I, think I would. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think I would uh, tell them to really take the opportunity to interact as much as possible with your teammates and the experts that surround you for, for, this, for the time uh, leading up to the competition, um, because it's, it's such a unique and rare opportunity, um, not only to take part in the competition and be exposed to an industry in a way that's pretty uncommon, I think, normally at the undergraduate level, but also to be able to um, learn, learn, learn from other people, um, the people that surround you and engage in, in discussions about the, ways, the best ways to solve the problem. So I think the fact that this is a team um, effort is really crucial. Thanks, yeah, I think that's a, a really good tip about working with people and, and enjoying the rest of the conference as well. Uh, somebody else was starting to speak at the same, uh, uh, was starting to answer that question too. Uh, yeah, that was me. So I can basically only second what Valeria said and maybe add like, just if you have the possibility and if you are interested or you think you might be interested because there's so much to learn about 
because there's so much stuff you might not even know about this field and so just just try and join and be a, like ask some friends make a team and and try to join because it's yeah it's as valeria already said it's such an amazing opportunity to get to in touch with all these uh with this field so, so early on so yeah i think it also it also helps to mitigate the steepness of the learning curve to discuss with others yes definitely and uh, it makes yeah and also make sure to really work together with your vendor partner or your local supercomputing center because that's really where the knowledge is um, make sure to ask them questions um, make ask them to explain things to you and point you to, to additional resources which you can then learn from you, you yourself um, because there's a lot of things you don't know um, that they're out there and the people who do the day-to-day -day running for computers supercomputers, um, they can really point you to the resources that you will need when setting up your own cluster. Yes, that's a that's a good tip. Your uh, local HPC connections have, have a, a lot of great knowledge and they'll also, I think, be quite excited to uh, be able to work with you know, new up and coming HPC people. Thanks, Team Recklet. Um, so next up, we'll uh, introduce some of the committee members. We have a, a number of the committee uh, on this call, so they might um, give a hi as we uh, run through. And we've got some kind of stock photos of a number of us, not quite all of us, but you'll be uh, seeing us around and hearing from us. So yeah, it's uh, good to be able to put uh, yeah, a face to the name or a voice to the name. Um, and uh, I guess the other uh, element here is that the student cluster competition is, is quite a big and involved event. And so you know, I'd like to thank uh, the many people who are involved in making it happen. It's uh, quite a, a big effort from a lot of people. So this year, uh, Veronica and Scott are co-chairing the committee, uh, Jason is vice chair and Kathleen is a deputy chair. Then we have uh, a large crew of us who are taking uh, other assorted roles. So uh, Rigo, Paul and Stephen are, are looking after infrastructure. Abhinav, who I think is on the call. Um, is leading the applications. Uh, Stephen is uh, looking after the reproducibility challenge, which is quite an important aspect of the cluster competition. Uh, Rebecca's uh, coordinating the student activities. Andy is coordinating our cloud access, and cloud aspects of the competition. Uh, I'll be mostly coordinating, not necessarily presenting a series of webinars and we have uh, a whole bunch of other people who are also um, taking roles, taking on tasks. One of the big tasks is going to be uh, each team member will have a liaison from the committee. So you'll have a first point of contact who can help you with uh, you know, various types of issues. So uh, we also have uh, Raymond, Angel, Sam, Brian, Carlos, and Esteban in the committee. Uh, yeah, just uh, keep moving on. All right, so then the next big question is how to apply. First and most important thing, uh, you'll be able to download the slides from the webinar site. So you can uh, cut and paste, or you can just Google for SC20 student cluster competition. You'll get to, to a page that looks like this. Bookmark this page because you can get to almost everything that you need from here. First step after you've uh, got that page, and this is all, all of these things that we're going to go through, 
uh, on this page by you know, scrolling down and unfolding sections. Read the regulations. These are kind of important. You need to know though, need to know these uh, as you're setting up your team. Some key points to have in mind. A team consists of six undergraduates and one advisor. Uh, everybody must be over 18 at the time of the event. The uh, conference and the cluster competition looks after your accommodation or, or provides accommodation and conference registration but uh, we need the sponsoring institution and or vendor to supply the hardware and software and so as a team part of your responsibility is to work with your institution and vendor to um, you know, make sure that that happens uh, the hardware might be alone and and that you know very typically is the case uh, we also encourage your institution or and or vendor to help out with covering shipping costs, uh, team transportation, and so on. Uh, one important rule is that the hardware that you use in the competition must be commercially available at the time of the event. Uh, it's kind of exciting getting new hardware that isn't out yet, but it's uh, a little bit too cutting edge. You know, we we need to be confident that you know, well, that the results can be reproduced and also that the hardware will in fact be ready. So uh, kind of as a spin-off from that, uh, we can't have NDAs if, if, uh, if you're under a non-disclosure agreement not to, uh, you know, not to publish any performance details, for instance, of the hardware, that makes it very difficult to use it in a competition. So, so your hardware does need to be available for somebody else to uh, buy and make an equivalent cluster as well. Next step, a little further down on the team, uh, on the, uh, the page, check out these tips under the SCC team applications. And we'll go through these in a little bit more detail in a moment, because this is the, the first sort of thing that you'll be doing, uh, submitting is the team proposal. And then finally, once you've done sufficient reading and pulled together a team and a uh, vendor and institutional sponsors, down the bottom of the page, or over at the side under some key dates, there's a link to submit. And that link will take you to the SC submissions uh, website, and you'll get a page that looks something like this, where you can go through and you'll fill out uh, names and details, and then answers to each of the elements of the team proposal. So, diving a, a little bit more detail in, into a little bit more detail about the application itself. We get uh, lots of great proposals every year, but we have a limited amount of booth space. And as the competition has uh, you know, grown and become more popular, we have to make some tough decisions about which uh, applications will be part of the actual event. So to help you to write a winning application, uh, we have a, a few tips here. And the first tip is that there are bonus points for being a first time team. So if you haven't uh, been in an SC competition before, uh, there are some bonus points and you know, in a tight field that can sometimes make the difference. So there are six kind of areas that get um, evaluated in the team application, which is the strength of the team, the strength of your hardware and software approach, the strength of your relationship with the uh, vendor and or institution, your uh, strength of team diversity, and your team preparation. There we go. So strength of team, there's a few tips here. What we're looking for is for teams who will go on to, to develop into great HP, HPC professionals. So, so you don't need to be experts already. You know, it helps if you're taking some related courses, um, but you, know, you don't need to have HPC experience to be a successful team here. Uh, you'll develop that HPC experience as you get ready for the competition and participate in the competition. Uh, some you know, great traits to have are uh, a team who, who works as a team, who is collaborative, who's uh, curious, motivated, the strength of your hardware and software approach. The uh, questions we're looking for here is, yeah, why, why are you choosing this particular hardware and software? So 
some tips are take a look at the list of applications and do a bit of uh, research about what are the characteristics of these applications? What do they need in hardware and software? And use that uh, to inform your design of your cluster. Uh, another good one to have in mind is what tools you're going to use. And, and a good tip here is to chat with your vendor partner. Um, you know, often the uh, vendors have some great tools for uh, you know, building and optimizing and debugging code and you know, learning how to use those tools and make effective use of them is a, is a really valuable skill. So the strength of your uh, vendor and institution relationship. What, what we're looking for here is we, we want to have confidence that you'll have sufficient support and also that your hardware will in fact be available. If your vendor is proposing hardware that's expected to be out but might not quiet, then yeah, that's that's a risk that you have to prepare for. So make sure that you've got a plan B in that case. Strength of diversity. So I think that things are kind of improving here, but yeah, in STEM generally and also in HPC, there, there's still a, a, a majority of professionals who yeah, kind of look and sound a lot like me. And yeah, that's that, that's kind of okay. We, we yeah, we've got a lot to contribute, but don't be um, put off if you do look and sound like me. But you know, there's a lot that you know, we really need uh, other people to uh, bring in. So yeah, we need uh, a lot more voices that are informed by you know, different backgrounds and histories in you know, cultural, language, gender, career, et cetera, uh, kind of senses. So you know, we're very interested in uh, what diversity your team can uh, bring into the competition and bring into HPC. And last but not least, preparation. So as you uh, heard in the videos and in the chat with uh, Racklet, you can get from completely new to a HPC rising tar star in, in quite a short amount of time. It's a, it's a steep learning curve, but you can do it. Uh, but it does take dedication and organization. So tell us about how you're preparing for the competition. What are the challenges you foresee? What, yeah, what are the things that you know that you don't know and that you are uh, you know, surprises that you might have to prepare for and what plans do you have for meeting those challenges? So a, a good tip here is to work with your institutions and vendors. Uh, yeah, they, they can provide a lot of resources and a lot of help here, um, both from you know, training sessions in how to use various tools, access to practice hardware, uh, you know, maybe even uh, people who are familiar with some of the applications. Other things that it's worth uh, knowing about. So your hardware and software. Uh, teams that have participated before will remember that there's a power limit that uh, has traditionally been 3000 watts. This year, we have a new power limit of uh, 4500 watts. So we can go a little bit bigger in our clusters. Uh, and on the page under the rules tab, uh, there is the detailed power specifications, including the PDU model. So you can yeah, bring up a picture of this thing and see important things like yeah, how many outlet plugs does it have? These rules are, are well worth uh, looking through. Other things to know about. So there'll be three benchmarks in the benchmarking aspect of the competition. LINPAC or High Performance LINPAC, HPL, tends to run very well. It's very compute intensive and not very, or compared to how uh, memory or communication intensive it is. And so HPL shows off the peak performance of the machine. And this is what gets used in the top 500 score every, every six months. HPCG is a conjugate gradient kernel. Uh, that's kind of a more realistic and much tougher benchmark. So, you know, you might find you know, you're, you're getting a teraflop out of HPL, but only 50 um, gigaflops out of HPCG, for instance. Those numbers might be rather high now. And IO500 is an IO performance benchmark. So this is becoming a more important aspect of HPC. There's, there's actually an old saying that uh, a supercomputer is a device for turning a, a compute intensive problem into a, a IO bound problem. So we're bringing the IO500, we did it uh, last year, kind of as a you know, first introduction. This year it will be yeah, a little bit more important. 
So your cluster will need to have uh, some uh, storage and IO resources. We're going to have a, a webinar about benchmarks coming up. Uh, watch the webinars page for announcements, but, uh, but will probably be one of the earlier ones. Okay, so the applications are already up and posted on the uh, student cluster competition page. We're aiming between now and the, uh, and the conference to have webinars about each of these applications to help you, uh, you know, prepare and tune and you know, get tips about each individual ones. So this year's application, uh, CESM is the uh, community earth systems model. It's a parallel climate model. It gets used in you know, real climate research. It's quite an important model. Uh, a lot of the IPCC reports uh, it's, it's one of the kind of key models that's used in there. It's a, it's a complex model. It's uh, quite challenging to optimize. So yeah, uh, just throwing lots of vectors is, uh, is probably not going to be enough for CSM. So you'll need to uh, yeah, look into how to design your uh, cluster to make good use, uh, to be able to run CSM well. Uh, then we'll have Gromax, which is a molecular dynamics model. Uh, this can run really fast and vectorize as well. It's being used amongst other things in some COVID-19 research. And uh, yeah, that might well be uh, one of our uh, topics, the application set might be, uh, you might be doing or reproducing some COVID-19 related research for the competition. A really important part of the student cluster competition is the reproducibility challenge. So something that's been observed in science generally and uh, computational science especially, is that it's quite, uh, it's difficult to reproduce other people's results and to, in, uh, to make this uh, easier and to encourage better reproducibility, there's more of a push for including uh, artifacts in papers that are published that allow somebody else to do the same experiment and to reproduce the results. And the student cluster competition is actually one of the forces kind of pushing for this. And um, we've had a reproducibility challenge for a few years now. So this year, the challenge will be to reproduce some of the results from the SC19 paper, Memex CT. And there's a link to the paper here. And we'll be having a webinar that goes into the reproducibility challenge in a bit more detail. And finally, there'll be one last application, which is a mystery application. And this one gets announced at the competition kickoff after the benchmarks uh, on Monday night of the, of the conference. So for the mystery application, because you don't know in advance what it is, it's very difficult to uh, prepare very much, but a good tip here is to practice building as many applications as you can, learn the different tricks and tricks tricks and traps of making things build, uh, getting them to run fast and uh, troubleshooting. Troubleshooting will be a, a very valuable skill for this one. So there are various sources where you can get help. Um, once the teams have been announced, there'll be a Google group that team members can communicate with each other as well as the committee and the application experts. So this is a really good resource for uh, helping each other and getting help from each other. Each team will get a, a liaison from the committee. So the liaison isn't the applications expert. So for, for applications and you know, technical kind of related questions, the Google group is still gonna be your go-to place, but your team liaison can help with uh, questions for the committee, um, can you know, guide you in the right directions around uh, event logistics so to, to help you make sure that things go smoothly. We're gonna have a series of webinars like this one. So you've uh, hopefully seen and bookmarked this page already. Uh, this is where webinars will be announced and uh, yeah, slides and other things will uh, be linked to from there. There's also a supercomputing uh, blog on the conference website. Uh, I've got a link here to a, a recent article that we published, which is on this same topic of how to get ready for a student cluster competition. And uh, I think uh, the article before that one in the list 
is about uh, the applications and choosing applications and some details about the applications. So this is a, a good resource to watch to see what's coming up and also to get uh, tips and tricks. And then finally, a couple of useful websites. So the official website is the second one in this list over here. It looks like this. There are links to there from, uh, from there to everywhere. That's the one that uh, has all of that information that we just walked through before. We also have a uh, cluster competition you know, history and extra information website. And this one can be updated, uh, uh, maybe may updated a little bit more frequently. And it's a good uh, place to look for some of the history. Uh, you can see photos from all competitions, what uh, applications were included in previous competitions, past winners. There's uh, yeah, lots of good information and interesting stuff to look at there. So this one's probably on everybody's mind, what's going to happen with the coronavirus. Um, you know, we don't know yet what November is going to look like. And so we're, we're planning for multiple eventualities, but the latest news and the uh, sort of yeah, official position where, where things are at is being posted by the conference committee at the top of the SC conference uh, web pages. So if you look in this top bar, there's a, uh, a link called coronavirus and SC with uh, a lot more detail or a bit more detail than what we have here. But you know, here are the key points is that you know, health and safety are our first priority and we're you know, monitoring closely what's going on and what the World Health Organization and other authorities are uh, advising. The committee is looking into options for uh, remote participation for the conference. And uh, you know, as, as more news about that comes up, we'll make uh, broader announcements. So yeah, so for information about you know, what's the current state, uh, you can check on this link up here. But at the moment, we're uh, still uh, planning and preparing. Yeah, we're, having uh, contingency plans, but uh, we're planning and preparing and yeah, optimistically hoping that uh, November is uh, looking better than, than uh, March did. A few important dates. Uh, team applications close June 19. That doesn't mean you have to wait until June 19. You can uh, put in your application at any time. They're open now, uh, but you have until June 19 to get them in and we'll send out the notifications shortly after July 3rd for uh, which teams will be um, participating in the event. Uh, the other big important date is the competition itself, which formally runs, officially runs between the Monday and the Wednesday, November 16 to 18, but uh, you'll need to plan to arrive a little before it for setup. So teams tend to arrive on either Friday night or Saturday, depending on where they're arriving from and uh, yeah, meetings and events start happening on Saturday afternoon. And awards and so on happen on the Thursday. So, you know, you probably wanna plan to be there for most or all of the week. Uh, webinars will be posted at this site. And that's an overview of the competition and how to join it. And here's a few important links. So uh, we've gone a little over what I initially imagined, but uh, we're still within the hour. So we have a, a few minutes for a uh, Q&A time. Um, you hopefully can still see this uh, slides.app.goo.gul T5NPZ. Um, that's a great place to ask questions. I think I've also... Uh, I think I've also said it so that everybody should be able to just speak. So if you have a question for either myself or for any of the committee who's on or for uh, any of our uh, past participants who are on, uh, please just uh, unmute yourself and ask away.
Hi, Steve. This is Veronica. I just wanted to say great job. I think this was very useful. Um, I hope you can hear me. But if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to also contact us with uh, social media or email um, the students that I, I see, uh, supercomputing email address. Um, and I just wanted to say great job, Steve. This was very nice. Thanks, Veronica. And uh, that's a, a good reminder. Yeah, so uh, we have a, a Twitter feed, which is students at SC. The, uh, there's a link on the slides here to that. Looks like we either covered every, everything or uh, stunned everybody into silence. Oh, thanks again, um, committee members and uh, ETH for ETH team for uh, joining us today. And to uh, all of you for uh, joining this webinar. We hope to keep seeing you in the webinars to come and in November. Okay, looks like we don't have any questions and it's nearly the top of the hour. So good uh, uh, morning slash afternoon slash evening, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, thank you all for attending. Thank you.